Hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar, Discover New Performance Testing Heights with JMeter DSL. Today's speaker is Roger Avalenda, Chief Technology Officer at Abstracta. Before we begin, I have some housekeeping items to go over. If you have a question for Roger, you can type it into the Q&A chat box. The Q&A session will be at the end, but feel free to throw questions in the chat at any time. Also, there will be a recording of this webinar sent out to all attendees, so keep an eye on your inbox. With that being said, Roger, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, so uh, you already introduced me, but I will do a little more introdu introduction of myself. Uh, I'm Roger Belenda. I'm from Uruguay, uh, South America. Uh, I have more than 17 years of experience in development mainly. I focus most of my career on developing high-end, high high-load uh, high applications, applications under heavy load and that require uh, heavy availability and like. So, and in the last years, I'm the CTO of Abstracta, where I mainly had teams with technical uh, issues. I foster uh, innovation in the company, and we also uh, I lead some innovation initiatives as well. And I also help with general strategy of uh, technology in the company. So, uh, one of these innovations is Shemitar DSL. That is one the, of the innovation that we have developed, and this presentation is going to cover, like give an introduction to it and what are the main benefits and how you can use it with Blissmeter in particular. So the presentation, uh, okay, this is me. Here are my contacts in case you want to to contact me or have any further questions after the, the webinar. Um, the general agenda for this uh, webinar is going to be review, Shemitar, its main benefits and, and some of the nuances that you might find with it, uh, compare it with some of the alternatives to some other open source alternatives. Uh, then uh, in that sense, check the motivation about around implementing Shemitar DSL, and then do a demo of Shemitar DSL so you get an idea of how it works, what it is, and what are the main benefits of it through the usage of it. And finally, we are going to end up with a summary of the of Shemitar DSL and then some time for Q&A, some minutes for Q&A. So let's jump into the first slide, the Shemitar and alternatives. Well, Shemitar is a great tool. It's one of the most popular tools in open source uh, performance testing and in performance testing in general. Uh, Shemitar is great because it provides a GUI uh, UI that allows you to do uh, in performance testing in a codeless fashion or a local fashion which is usually nice for beginners or newcomers or people that is not used to coding itself. Uh, it's very popular, as I mentioned, there are, is a lot of documentation. Uh, it's very flexible and powerful. There are support for many protocols like mainframe, video streaming, and, and the like. Uh, it's also very, uh, there are many plugins for that. It's very extensible. You can even implement your own plugins uh, with some Java knowledge. Uh, there is a big ecosystem around it. Um, it provides live reporting for free, which other solutions, the other open source solutions do, do not provide for free. Um, you also get all the benefits of the Java ecosystem. You can use uh, any Java library or any tool, Java tool with Meter quite easily. It is a great tool, but it also has some uh, issues or, or, or problems that you might face when, when work with, with it and due to its nature. One of them is that it's not very developer friendly and not Git friendly in the sense that you get a, a big XML, which is very difficult to review changes and review uh, what is inside of the test plan that you created. It's also not, it doesn't have native integration with CICDs. There are some plugins for some uh, of them. You have to download some, some tools to be able to, to, to run the, the performance test. And there is no PC integration for making a test fail or pass according to some criteria. Uh, the visibility is also an issue. We will see about this in, in the demo. Um, there is, as I mentioned, there is no like this concept. There is no built-in solution for doing assertions over all the statistics collected uh, during a performance test. And in general, modularization of test plans is not at, as optimal as doing it with other solutions. Like if you will need to manage different shame X files and it is 
difficult to parameterize those smaller stations. So we'll see also about that in the demo. So the other open source uh, alternatives or some of the more uh, common or more uh, known alternatives are these other like Kathleen, Taurus, and K6. There are others like Locust. They mainly focus on a different approach that is uh, a code-based approach. Uh, Gatlin in particular is Scala-based, which means that you will need to know Scala or have a Scala and have a Scala environment to be able to run the test. Uh, as it is based on code, it is easy to visualize the, the, the test plan uh, to get a full visibility of an entire test plan. It's easy to understand what the changes are uh, because the test plan are, are shorter. There is support for IDE, so it's easier for developers to collaborate with performance testers and automators. And it's easier to modularize also this code. And it's also it also provides these assertions or acceptance criteria for the performance test execution after it ends with like checking statistics. It has some problems as well. As I mentioned, you will need Scala. Uh, there is less documentation, less support, less flexibility or popularity as JMeter. You lose all the knowledge that you might have of JMeter and all the popularity of JMeter and power of JMeter. Uh, it doesn't provide live reporting and like. Taurus is, an, Taurus is another solution. It's an open source solution developed by BlazeMeter. It's a really nice tool that uh, allows you to create a test plan, a performance test or load test uh, through a YAML file which is quite short and simple to understand. It's easy, again, easy for programmers and the like. The main issue that you might face with that is that it requires both a Python environment and a Java environment. So if your application is on Java, you will need to install also Python and you have this YAML file that it doesn't have any auto-completion or any uh, inline documentation. So every time you want to discover anything or you want to check how a, a particular element works, you will need to go to the website of Taurus and check for that. It is a great tool for because it allows you to run tests in any performance tools. In fact, it uses some, like you can use it for running K6 tests, you can use it for running Gatlin, you can use it for running JMeter. It does provide Blaze Meter integration easily. Um, and it also has the, the ability to, to do assertions. But yeah, again, it's like there are pros and cons, and if you use it for Shemita, like if you use the, only the YAML syntax, you you there are some things that you cannot uh, do, like some capabilities of Shemita that you uh, that you that are not supported, like some protocols, for instance, are not easy to 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 do with with Toros itself. Well, K6 is mostly the same as the other two. The main difference is that it's JavaScript. So if in your team you're a Java, if you have a Java team uh, developing the performance test or developing the application under test, switching to JavaScript might, might be an issue. But if your application is JavaScript, maybe uh, case is an option. But in general, what we what we saw about this the the, the entire ecosystem is that it, it would be awesome to take all the benefits of JMeter and also take the benefits of these other tools as to have something that allows you. Uh, to to get the best of worlds, both both worlds, right? So this is why we came with Shemeter DSL. So very briefly, Shemeter DSL is a Java API. We also provide a .NET API, but in general, I will talk in this talk in this webinar about the Java in interface. Um, the it's a, a simple API that allows you to create Shemeter performance tests and run them right into your ID. Here's a simple example, but uh, don't. let's just dump into the demo and I will show you everything. And I will show you how easily you can use it and work with it. With it. So now I will go to IntelliJ IDEA. So this is an IDE that I'm going to use. You can use whatever other IDE that you, you would like to, like Eclipse or NetBeans or whatever. Um, one thing that I'm going to do right now is I'm going to create a performance test project from scratch. In general, we don't we we don't uh, advise you to do this way. I mean, we if you already have a Java project, uh, uh, an application, and uh, that you want to test, that you want to run performance tests on it, we shall advise you to put performance test code inside the same project of the 
production code. In that way, you get all the production code and the test code version in the same place with the same versioning. You don't get issues with some tests not matching with the production code and the like. And also, it's easier for you to do continuous performance testing and doing shift less performance testing, which is really nice and is in general what we advise to do. So <clears throat> that being said, I will start from scratch. In case you want to start from scratch as well, you can check this project, Shameter Shava DSL sample. It's just a bootstrap project that you can use and will have like the basics to start with. Or you can visit the user guide for Shameter DSL where we provide a very simple example and there is a complete guide on its steps or over steps, uh, step by step. Uh, on how you can introduce, what are the main features, and how you can improve your test plan. And also, we provide some tips, best, best practices, and warnings. That being said, uh, let's jump on to the demo. Let's create our new performance test project. I will name this uh, test project, or let's, I will test open card. So, open card. Open card is just a sandbox application that we use. For, for demos, open cast, op, ooh, open cart performance test. We use Java, Maven, and we use the latest version of Java, but we, you can use whatever ver version of Java. Something interesting about Shemir DSL is that you can use Maven, you can use Gradle, you can use whatever tool you want. And you can also use, you are not restricted to using Java. You can use, in fact, any JVM language like Kotlin, Groovy, uh, or Scala itself to create your test. So now that I've created this uh, project, I will just add the usual uh, dependencies for test projects in Java. This is a Maven project, by the, by the way. So I will add some dependencies. I will add Sheunit. Okay, you can use Sheunit, Test and She. If you use Groovy, you can use Spock, so you can use whatever testing library you like. And since I like a certain for doing assertions, I will use it. Again, you can use whatever assertion library you like. For instance, you can use Hamcrest, you can use the unit assertions, SNC assertions, whatever. Okay, and something else I need to add here is a configuration uh, for the unit 5 uh, test to be picked by Maven. So let's copy it from here. In the sample project, you have it as well. Uh, it's just updating the compiler plugin used by Maven. Okay, we are almost done. I mean, this is just the basics of a Java project, a Java testing project. It is still not a Java Shemitor DSL or performance test project. So let's add Shemitor DSL as a dependent. Shemitor Java DSL, and we will use the latest version. Now we can start creating our tests. We'll go here, Java, let's create a class per, oh, not here, here, yeah. Perfor, performance test, okay. Let me add the scope test here as well. That's it. And now I'm going to create my test. So this is just a say unit five test, but I'm going to start creating our actual performance test using Shemeter DSL. So for that, we start with a test plan as we do with Shemeter. As you can see here, the ID is automatically uh, showing me that I'm missing some things. So we are taking full advantage of the ID features and we are importing the test plan from Shemeter DSL. I will just put an asterisk here so we I don't have to import everything. And now if I go here, I can add a thread group. Here you can see one of the advantages of using Shemitor DSL. Uh, when you want to search something, it's pretty easy. The IDE will automatically show you what are all, all the options. So for example, if I type thread group here, you can see all the options for a thread group. It's quite easy to search and find elements. In the Shemitor GUI, it's not that easy to search and find for elements that you want to add. And in fact, here you can also see that we give you a nice short uh, contract for each of the elements for the most used 
use scenarios. If you want to add some other options, you, you can add later on. But here you can see that I can create a thread group with threads and duration. I can even check the documentation here and see what are the threads or what are what is duration and what is this method about or this element about. So you have everything in here and you don't have to go to the Shameter user guide or some other source. You have everything here to create your test plan quick and fast and easily discover all the elements that are available to you. So I will create a thread group with one, <coughs> sorry, one thread and one iteration. And inside the thread group, I will add an HTTP. Again, you can see all the options here with their documentation, everything pretty detailed with some tips and warnings as well. And I'm going to do a test that tests HTTPS opencart.abstracta.us. This is just the sandbox application. And now what I should do is run this test plan. And that's basically it. With this, you already have a performance test. But be before actually running it, I will want to review if the request that I made is the proper request and I'm getting the proper response from the server. So for that, I will add a resource tree visualizer. This is just a, a, an element that allows you to debug your test plan that you can later on remove. So for example, let's run this test. Ah, I should have renamed the test. Should when it's not a good name, I will just put it test. Okay. And now you can see that the test plan is actually running and it opened this VRESUS3 visualizer, which is actually the Shameter visualizer. And you can see here all the request body, headers, and response body and headers. So, and you can also get the general statistic in here. So I have run this test. I have reviewed the, the, the test plan. I, I don't need to install Shameter or anything like it. I don't need to install anything. The only thing that I need is a Java environment. Um, so you don't need to update the Shameter itself. Every time you update the library, it will automatically update Shameter in, in, in the backend. And what else? Well, we have reviewed this. Uh, we have seen uh, the automatic completion. It's quite fast to create a test plan. I, in this case, I was explaining everything, but let me show you how it would like, how, it, how this test plan will be created in Shameter itself. So let's compare that to this. So here, if I create a thread, I, I have to know that the thread groups are under thread. I create a thread group. I need to check here. Okay, one thread, everything seems okay. Let's add also an HTTP sampler here for that URL. I will need to put HTTPS opencart.abstracta.us and then probably a path here. I, is this everything? Okay, I don't know. What about advanced? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, let, let's leave it like that and hope it's okay. And something else that, okay, I will add also the view resource tree as I did in the other scenario. And we'll, you will say, okay, this is enough. This is usually what you will do for creating a test plan and verify that the request and response are okay. Well, there are some issues and some best practices that are not included when you create this test plan as this way, for instance, Usually, you will also like to add a config element, a cookie manager. This is mainly when you do logins and you need cookies and need it to behave like a browser. And you usually would like to check this box. And also, usually, you would like to add a cache manager so the sampler or the test plan <laughs> in general uh, behaves as a browser does. So you see that I had to add or remember adding these elements. And in general, also, if I want to review what are, if I see this test plan, I I, I kind of see, okay, it it looks pretty good. What about if I add a download embedded resource? I will need usually to check this and also to check this to behave as, as usually browsers uh, work. And in Shermeter DSL for doing that is pretty easy. You go here and do download embedded resources. And you can see that here, uh, this test plan is easy to identify that it's downloading test, uh, embedded resource. In this case, you will need to go to every element and review, okay, this one has the embedded resources, but maybe another doesn't have it. 
And so it's, it's more difficult to navigate through it. And as you can see, it's not as intuitive to, to, to understand what every element is on it. Like you only have the labels, you don't have documentation again on, on the ID, on the GUI. And it's harder to find elements that are suited with HTTP because they are spread all over different elements, like for example, con config controllers, samplers, and the like. An additional difference here is when you save this and put it in Git, you will get something like this. This is the XML that is representing the same test plan I, I shown you. Oh, there are some elements that, are, in fact, are not here. But anyways, it's mostly the same test plan, uh, like this one. I will remove this one, so it's mostly the same, it's actually the same. So you see that it has a lot of information. I mean, it has a lot of properties. Every time you change something, you will have to understand what is in it to be able to review the changes, unless you have to open that on the GUI and go all over the GUI to check every single uh, property is the, the way it should be. With Shemir DSL, you have everything here. So it is easy, easy to understand what a change was and you get everything in there. Additionally, Shemir DSL already provides you with HTTP cookie manager and cache manager configurations. Since these are the most common uses of uh, Shemitter test plan for HTTP request, the Shemitter DSL automatically includes them. If you want to disable them, there are options for, for disabling it, but again, we try to give you the most simple and fastest way to create your test plan without having to fall into common pitfalls or non uh, not good practices or, or issues with Shemitter. Another, for, for example, best practice and, and thing that we enforce in Shemitter is, for example, when you do a post, it's a usual mistake or a problem in Shemitter GUI to uh, 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 to avoid or to, to, to not include the content type header. So in this case, uh, the DSL is already requesting you to provide the content type header to avoid this common mistake. So here, for example, if I want to send a post with a JSON, I can just do something like this, prop and one, this is the JSON, and to specify the content type, that's it. We have a proper post with the proper content type header and the URL. So let me check if I'm missing something before going on. <laughs> okay, something else that you can do, as I already mentioned, you can easily modularize here and even parameterize. For example, if I want to do two HTTP requests, it's easy to do copy paste, but not only that, I just, for example, if I want to do with users or if I want to this URL to be in one place, I can easily use extraction from the IDD, um, put a name on it. And if I want to change one, it's just as easy as do this. And you can even create base uh, like templates of your samplers or part of your test plan. For example, if I want all the HTTP samplers to download embedded resources, I can do this and create a method, again, using the ID, like my sampler, and you can put a proper name on it, and then you can use the same sampler, for example, for doing users. Again, this download embedded resources, you can also do it with HTTP default element, but the good thing about this modularization is that this parameterized, you can parameterize it and then reuse it. You can even create your own shards, your own dependencies, and then use it in different projects. So it's very nice to create abstractions and extend your test plan. So let's move back. I will just go back to our initial test plan now. So I'm undoing. No, it's not. Okay, good. So we are back to the basic of our test plan. What will be the next step? I would like to be able for this test, this training test, to fail when certain criteria is not met and to pass when the criteria is passed. For, for example, to check on percentiles, uh, to response percentile. This is a usual thing to check percentiles or errors, percent, errors percentage and the like. 
So now I'm going to use one of the Shameter DSL models that allows you to see the statistic on real time. I want to see the, the statistic to be able to identify what is a good percentile threshold for this application or this test. So I will change this test to run, uh, yeah, first let's add the element that will show the, the statistic. It will be a dashboard visualizer. This element is not included in the Shameeter core library. So we will need to add uh, another dependency here. That is just dashboard. We update our dependencies. And now I can do the static import of this element. And I will run the test with a, with a little more effort so as to see not just one uh, <coughs> request and response metric. I want to see several. So let's run one thread or yeah, maybe two threads with uh, 100 iterations each, okay? So now, if I run this, I will see, again, this dashboard visual visualizer has a similar usage as the resource tree visualizer. It's only used in temporal things. Usually when you want your performance test to go in production, you will remove it. So now I can see all general statistics in this dashboard, like I can see response time, is under 400 in general. There is one with one second and six. I see the active threads, the number of requests per second, and number of <coughs> responses per second per response call. So that's nice. I can even stop the test uh, here that I already check what I wanted to check. So in general, it seems that if I use a percentile, like 90% or an average or a median around 400 milliseconds, uh, it should be nice. But I will put now an, an, a, uh, an assertion. I will check, in fact, a more restrictive assertion so you see how the test fails. OK, so now what we want to do is do an assertion. Like we want to check that the behavior uh, collected or the, the information, the response times collected from the test plan from this load test uh, actually meets some criteria. For that, you can get the statistics just doing this. I will use autocomplete here. And I have the statistics of the execution. And I can you do an assertion on them. In this case, I will use, again, assert shape, assert that. I will need to import this uh, there. And now I can work with the statistics. Dot. So here, everyone, like every time you want to interact with DSL, usually you just press dot and you get all the complete options that are available to you. So it's pretty easy to, to discover new things, and it's pretty fast to work with once you get the hand of it. So here, for example, I'm checking that uh, uh, sample time percentile 99 for the overall metrics is less than, for example, duration of millis, I don't know, 100. This will probably fail because the, the, the as we have seen, the, the, the service usually responds with more than uh, 100 milliseconds. And now if I run this, for running the test, in this case, I'm using ShareUnit and I'm using the IDE auto, uh, integration with it. But you can use Maven, you can use Gradle, you can use, since ShareUnit is, is already uh, supported by your, oh, sorry, I missed removing the dashboard. Let's remove it so it's not bothering. Since ShayUnit, I was telling you that since ShayUnit is already supported but but most or, or all CICD tools, you get by free the integration with ShayUnit in your test. So every time the performance test fails, you get all the reports in your, in your CICD and you don't need to install anything. You don't need to install ShayMeter. Uh, you don't need to install any plugins. It will just work out of the box. Well, let's make it shorter, the test, otherwise it will take some time. And um, yeah, let's make it like that. <laughs> yeah, it probably will take some time either, but in general here, uh, you can see that the test plan is running. It's using ShareMeter underneath. And here you see that the test has failed. And you actually see that we were expecting 
uh, one uh, 100 milliseconds and we got like around 800 milliseconds. So this is good. Now your test is ready to run in CI CD. That's awesome. So the next step you will say, what is the next step? Well, usually running the test here, I'm running my test locally in my machine. Usually running the test when you want to run a, 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 an actual performance test in a, in a production environment, use, using just one machine to generate the load usually is not enough. So usually what the next step will be to scale your test to run in a cluster of machines. One of the great solutions for this is BlazeMeter. So we can use BlazeMeter quite easily, we show you just now, to run our test at uh, in, in a cluster of machines. So for example, I can use a big number of threads without saturating the actual machine that is generating the load. Since after you saturate the machine, you will get uh, not the desired results. So it's usually better when you generate a big load to use a cluster of machine. Anyways, so how do I run this test on BlazeMeter? You, you say and scale it on BlazeMeter. Well, it's quite easy. Instead of run, you use run in, and you have to specify an engine. We do provide an engine for BlazeMeter. So it's just including the proper model. In this case, JMeter Shava DSL BlazeMeter. We update it here. And we do a new BlazeMeter engine. This BlazeMeter engine is requiring our authentication token, our BlazeMeter authentication token, which I'm going to give it from an environment variable. And that's it. We have our tests ready to run on BlazeMeter. And after it runs, we actually can check that the statistics, the collected statistics are the ones we expect. So let's, oh, before running it, I will just add a, a configuration file. So as allow me to see some additional information on the log output. Uh, let's add the directory here, the resource directory, and I will copy from the sample project. Uh, where was it? Oh, yeah, here is the sample project. From the sample project, I'm going to copy a configuration file. This is a usual configuration file that is uh, used in most of Shava project. It's a love for shape configuration file. So I will love for shape. What's the name actually? Low for C2, log text ML, and we copy it here. And now I see there are some pros. Okay. And now I will run it. <clears throat> so now the test is starting to run. We should see some logs. If I didn't do, yeah. You can see now that the BlazeMeter engine updated an existing test I already had that was named Shemeter DSL and started the test run. And I can even click on this and see our test run running in live fashion. Okay, while this run, I will show you what you actually get after you run the test plan. You get this usually, like this is awesome. I mean, this is one of the main benefits of using BlazeMeter aside from, from having a, a way to easily scale without having to worry about the infrastructure that is running underneath. Uh, you get these nice reports that are live reports and then you also get all this historic information about all the runs that you have done. You can review them, you can compare them. You get all these statistics. You can even check the health of the engines in here. You can get all the logs. You can review the errors. You can even do some uh, custom graphing on the tool. So this is awesome. And you have seen that it's quite easy to run a test plan here. In fact, this has already finished because it was pretty short. It was not the standard load test, but, oh, sorry. This was not one, uh, okay. This was the one that we were we were running. So you see that now it's downloading, etc. But avoiding this the, this uh, time is spent in the setup. Let's let let me show you something else that you can do and and some additional nice features of, about Shameter DSL and the BlazeMeter integration. In general, in your test plan, when you generate different users and you want to generate a performance test, you also want 
for the request to vary. I mean, you want, for example, if I I would like to set like a parameter, for example, username here and have it different names uh, from a file, for example. That is a usual requirement. And for doing that in Shemeter DSL, it's as easy as creating a CSV data set where you can specify a CSV file path or specify a test resource. A test resource, let's create one a test resource here. Uh, let's create a users.csv. Uh, have, for example, two users, one is test and one is test2. And I can use that test resource file here by specifying users.csv. And now I can use the users in here as shameter variables here, for example, user. And just with that, it will automatically, the integration that we have created with BlazeMeter, we automatically upload the CSV file to Shemeter to BlazeMeter and run the test plan with that uh, CSV. This also works with HTTP request files. For example, if you specify a body file in the HTTP sampler, it will automatically upload it. And in case you want to cust further customize your, your BlazeMeter execution, you can always hit the dot. So here you can see that I can upload additional files with assets if you need, uh, or you can use set up different uh, properties like the test name, the whole four, if you want to overwrite it, the project ID, and etc. So it's quite easy to, to modify and to use uh, CSPs as well. Okay, and so now I think we have covered most, oh, there is one additional thing that I want to mention to you. <laughs> Uh, you may say, okay, I have this is this looks great, but I have a lot of JMX files. How can I migrate them to start using the, the DSL? Well, we also provide a solution for that. We provide a tool that is a JMX to DSL command in a shard. You can download this shard, and there is a command in there, JMX to DSL, DSL, where you provide the JMX file and it will. Uh, convert it to actual DSL code. You, you see here, I actually get a shell file. In fact, this file is executable. You can use shebang, which is a library. There, is, there are comments in here to, to give you an introduction, but you can just run it and it will just run the test and it will say if it fails and, it, and it, 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 or it doesn't. Or you can copy paste the test plan and then modify it and go from there. So with this, you don't, you not only have a, a solution to be able to migrate from JMX files, you have a solution that allows you to understand how to identify or to learn about JMeter DSL through the examples that you already have. And you also have integration, like you can, for example, uh, record your test with BlazeMeter extension, Chrome extension or browser extension, and then you can convert them to DSL and then submit your DSL code to Git and uh, keep working from there. So I think that's basically it. So now let's jump back to the documentation. Now, uh, one, one additional comment before going to the to the slides. Here you have the in the user guide, as I mentioned, we have all the steps and different uh, document everything from the point of view of a user, not from the components, more on the needs. But here, for example, if you want to use BlazeMeter for scaling, running that scale, you can easily see uh, an example and uh, all the details and all the tips and warnings that you have to uh, take into consideration with using this component. Okay, so now let's go to the to the slides and let's do a wrap up. So using Shameter DSL, you get a lot of benefits. You get all the benefits from Shameter, like the popularity, the ecosystem, flexibility, extensibility, all the protocols. In fact, we currently in Shemeter DSL don't support everything from Shemeter, but we encourage users if they need something that create an issue and we it's quite easy and fast for us to implement new features in the DSL. We usually try to review what each needs uh, requires. I mean, if uh, to, to try to identify properly the, the scenario and document that, but in general, we are really eager to create to add new features to the DSL. Uh, you also get the Java ecosystem support from Java itself or .NET. Again, we also provide a .NET library uh, on top of the Java library. You get all the benefits of the call, like 
Git is Git friendly. Uh, you get embedded documentation on the IDE. It's easy to modularize all the IDE features like auto completion, checking for types, etc. Uh, you got easy test plan readability and maintenance. Easy extensibility because you can just add Java code or any code to, to your test plan. And you get all the support for JVM languages, like you can use Groovy, Kotlin, Scala, whatever. And you can, I think this is one of the most important ones, is you can foster collaboration between performance testers, developers, automators, and the entire team to use the same ecosystem and use the same tools and collaborate, creating performance tests and load tests and verifying your application. There are some additional on using JMeter DSL, like doing this as a statistic assertion. You can use a JUnit SNG and all the integration that is already provided by CI CD tools or other tools on top of JUnit and SNG. You can use JX, JMX to DSL to migrate your project if you want or to check how the code will look like. We also provide a recorder that is quite simpler than, to use than the usual JMeter recorder. It requires a lot less steps. We provide light dashboard, simplifiers, simplify in general uh, usage of the JMeter. You don't need to have all the knowledge. We usually try to avoid some common pitfalls, uh, try you to avoid some common pitfalls. And we also encourage good practices on the code. So, Thank you. That's basically it. And I think it's now time for some Q&A. Thank you, Roger. Um, like you said, we are now in the Q&A portion of this webinar. So if you have any questions, please feel free to throw them in the chat box. Let's see. Looks like we got our first one here. Um, is there any enterprise support? Well, yes. The, we like there is usually with all the open source tools there is all, all, uh, usually the community support, which is a best effort solution for some uh, and the, the community is very collaborative in that way. But if you want enterprise solution, Abstracta, which is the company I work for, and it's a company implemented the Shemitar DSL provides uh, support, so we can help you creating uh, the performance, the migrating your test. We can help you doing a workshop about Shemitar DSL. We can help you implementing a good best practice and modularizing your test and also in general reviewing test plan. So yep, Abstracta provides enterprise support. <laughs> awesome, thank you, Roger. Let me see here. Oh, the next question is, how can I integrate JMeter DSL into the CI CD? Well, in fact, as I already mentioned, you don't need to have to do anything in particular. You just use the tools that you already know. Like if you can use Maven, you can use Gradle, and you can use whatever, even SBT, for example, if you use Scala. Uh, so it's just as easy as running any Java test, any JUnit test, any test and she test, or any test like that. And again, you get all the integration uh, already provided by the, this, the CI CD tools on this on these uh, solutions. So you don't need to install a JMeter plugin or some other plugin uh, on, on underneath. It will work just out of the box. Awesome. Give me a moment to see if there's some other ones. Um, are there any future plans for the DSL? Well, we, yeah, we, we do have plans. Uh, in general, what we try is to encourage uh, people to ask for features, and we try to implement things that the community is, is, is asking. If you contact the, the, the enterprise support from Abstracta, we can more faster, like <laughs> more faster, not faster, implement the features. We can dedicate a team to it. Uh, for the community in general, we do as as a best support, uh, as best effort. I mean, uh, in any time we, we can uh, provide to it, but it's not something that is a dedicated team to it. So in general, like the roadmap, we try to move it as the community needs. We don't try to over-engineer the DSL. We try to keep it simple and we try to fill the needs of the users. So it's very important for us that uh, users request features and we drive our um, vote for features also uh, and ask questions. In that way, we can drive the next releases. We have in the backlog, in the issues already provided by the users, we have several things to tackle. So 
keep 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 in sync. And uh, one thing that we have also in the roadmap is the .NET DSL, which is currently uh, it's in its initial versions. So we have to cover a lot a lot more features to keep it up with the Java version itself. Awesome. Looks like we have a three-parter here. So the first question is, what is the status of the .NET DSL? OK, so we have released the .NET DSL like two months ago. Uh, it is fully functional and provides most of the features for doing simple test plans with HTTP. It does provide integration also with Blaze Meter, but it doesn't provide all the features that Java DSL already provides. So there are things still to cover there, and we are encouraging again users to ask for features they need and to try it out. So we get feedback and we improve it further. Awesome, thank you. And it looks like you answered the other two questions with that, so I appreciate that. You read my mind. <laughs> Um, and then it looks like we are about to wrap up here. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, Roger. Yep. Before we head out, I just wanted to let everyone know of an upcoming webinar that's on September 12th, The Future of Testing, a conversation about the use of AI and ML. This is your chance to gain insights into the market, hear about changes within testing, and learn how Perfecto brings new innovation to their customers. If you are interested, you can head over to blazemeter.com or perfecto.io to register. And it looks like with that, we're going to wrap up. If you have any further questions, please reach out to support at blazemeter.com or message roger at roger at abstracta.us. And as a reminder, keep an eye on your inbox for the recording of today's webinar. Thank you all, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.